the calculation of fraction, the ionic radii or the atomic radii, people usually call them ionic radii because ion has some electrical implications and properties. So the calculation of a body center cubic is done using this equation and people determine the, the, it is very important to know about the packing fraction. The packing fraction significance comes when you need to calculate the properties. And I usually give the example that if I have these atoms and they are, for example, four angstrom away in all directions, then the property I am measuring is how much the material is there. If the material property is there and there are many spaces there, then the density will be very low. And I am measuring the air plus property. So how much space is open and how much space is covered by the material or the unit cell? So how much space is covered actually by the material is very important. I just give you to visualize that at what happens there. But basically, when you are measuring the dielectric constant of the material and the material is 90% dense, 95% dense, people consider it enough for the quality, 95%. But if it is 50% dense, then you are measuring the property, 50% of the property of the space. So it will not give you that. But the packing fraction deals with the density of the unit cell. And people calculate it in various manners. I'll share the notes with you regarding that. A face-centered cube now has more points at faces at all the eight, uh, how many faces? If this is like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they have six faces and at each face you have uh, atoms and obviously at the corners. So this is face center, body has only, body center have only one in the center of the body. Now, in the case of face center, you have ah, one eighth of an atom from the corners and half up from the faces. And in this way, you get if one half of an atom from the six faces, it will give you three, three and one eighth from the corners will give you one, so you will have four points per unit cell. And the 14 previous lattices in three dimensional will look like primitive, for example, triclinic. In monoclinic, you have two, primitive as well as centered, base centered, primitive, body centered, base centered, are same one face has centering and face centered. Each face has one. So, eternal and body center. Trigonal and hexagonal P. Here is the answer of your assignment if you understand. And trigonal R, rhombic and trigonal hexagonal. That is almost considered the same. And uh, here it's the cubic, primitive, body centered, and face centered. So, how many are they? One, two, three, four, four, eight, eleven, and three, fourteen. So, Brevis basically introduced these group, fourteen limit uh, lattices, which are still used internationally in crystallography and is one of the most, uh, what you call, uh, important contribution in crystallography. And if you look into these schematics images type things, then they look like that, that, that how the triclinic, which is the poorest and lowest symmetry, monoclinic, orthorhombic, tetragonal, cubic, trigonal, and hexagonal. Similarly, 
we should know about that uh, what naturally occurring crystals are these are uh, uh, right this is a uh, rutile rutile is basically the uh, polymorph of a titanium dioxide barite is basically barium sulfate which is found in some region of the country and this is a uh, rhodonite corundum it is the alumina al203 cerocite which i don't know and boron which is this and they are naturally in these crystalline forms as you see written around them so nature has a lot to teach us from the geometries from the symmetries triclinic crystal in case of it is not equal to be not equal to c and alpha beta gamma are unequal so sometimes the symmetry becomes very difficult to verify that whether it is symmetric or not but if you select a complex unit and it repeats itself after the transla translation then you can't exclude it from the uh, crystal in the monoclinic you have base centered and primitive i'm just taking you a quick uh, review of what are the basics which you are studying from the very early classes of science and these are different these 010100 type things are called miller indices and these are symbolic vector representations of an atomic plane in a crystal lattice and are defined as the reciprocals of the fractions, fractional intercepts which the plane makes with the crystallographic axis. When I was telling you in the previous slide, it looks very confusing, but when you practically do it, they will become very easy. And now I'll show you the method how to do it. Procedure for finding Miller indices. Find the intercepts of the desired plane on the three coordinate axes let's say that when you start from the origin and uh, you you have a three-dimensional space or planes of atoms and you have a plane for example this was the plane this was the plane this is x-axis this is y-axis so it is perpendicular to z-axis but parallel to x and y-axis for, uh, for example parallel to x and y-axis mean no intercept along the x and y-axis and if it cuts the z-axis at one unit vector one lattice parameter this means it is one so it is zero zero one so the intercepts along the x, y, z axis, for example, if they are P, A, Q, B, as I have written here, and R, C, express these intercepts at multiples of the unit cell dimensions. That is, lattice parameters, that is P, Q, R. P, Q, R how many translational points they have crossed and this a b c are obviously the latest parameters take the reciprocals of these intercepts these fractions of these so the intercept if it is two then it will become one over two along the twice if it is half a the plane cuts the a axis half of its distance total distance if the a axis is four angstrom and it is cut at the middle it two then it is half a and in the when you reciprocate them take reciprocal of them then one over p will become two if it crosses uh, intercepts the y axis that plane at for example never it's parallel to y-axis and similarly if it crosses the z-axis at one latest parameter then its value will be one so it'd be one one over one 
so you have one over two because of that half parallel and being parallel to the y-axis uh, one which is one so when you take it it will be one over two and what did i say one over one so multiply it by two to make them whole numbers the lcm when it is multiplied then it will become one zero two right one zero will is infinity where it will be one over infinity is zero a few some examples for example if you look into this figure it can be really understandable that this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis so the z-axis is intercepted at one lattice parameter so it is one the intercept along the z-axis is one but it never crosses never intercepts the x and y axis it is parallel to y axis it is parallel to z axis so the intercept along the x and y axis are infinities one over infinity is zero and one over infinity is zero and the intercept along the z axis is one so it is one take the intercept along the three axes and work them multiply it by the lcm and you will get the miller indices but remember this plane and this plane are the same for example it can be zero zero minus one but it is upon the choice of origin which you select if your origin is here and you are moving in the upward direction if your origin is somewhere here and you're moving in the down direction then it becomes negative and positive the same thing is here this plane it cuts look at it it is parallel to z axis cut y axis at one and x axis at one this is x axis and it cuts aft here at one so the intercept along x axis and the y axis is one one and no intercept along the z axis z axis so it's parallel to z axis and it's infinity so it gives you zero and its scale indices are miller indices for these will be one one zero two zero zero when it cuts the x axis at half so you are tacking in the reciprocal space similarly one 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 the z axis this is the y axis at x axis at one if this is the origin this plane cuts this x axis at one the y axis the z axis the z axis is this one so beyond there please note that practical thing is very important you can't see where it intercepts the z axis but just like here you have a point here behind this plane and therefore here is the z which is intercepted so x axis here when this is the origin the y axis is here which is parallel to this here and the z axis is this one and it is there behind the plane so the x the y and the z planes are cut are intercepted at one lattice parameter each so one 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 here if you remember f this p is one q is one and r is one and they are the reciprocal is taken they will be one 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 but if they are fractions then when you take the lcm the value will become different and it will change but all one 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 planes will be parallel 
all two zero zero planes will be parallel. All one zero zero one zero plane will be parallel. Zero zero one plane will be parallel. So it doesn't make the difference whether you call a plane. 001002003004008 unless there are certain conditions upon the hkl indices that whether odd is allowed or not allowed even is allowed or not allowed in some cases for example the odd is not allowed then you start from 2004006000 but they are equivalent planes so it is it is totally dependent upon the choice of the origin and from there you start and you go from people prefer the lowest numbers in order to see the maximum latest parameter the lowest number in reciprocal space represent the maximum number in the real space so here i have a little bit shown it clearly but if you look here, and uh, I am not finding the arrow, yeah, here. This is the x axis. Axis intercept is 2 by 3. The origin is somewhere here. So 2 by 3 is the intercept along the x axis. Y intercept is 8, 1. Latest parameter, when they start from the origin, it crosses the y axis at 1 and the z intercept is parallel it is parallel to the z axis if you put a card in the middle of the cube you can do that practically so the intercept are 2 by 3 1 and infinity take reciprocal of this it will become 3 by 2 1 over 1 and 1 over 0 and the lcm is Two, right so when i multiply this three by two one over one and one over infinity by two it will become three two zero because one over infinity is zero and if i multiply it by two or 200 it will give me zero so the scale indices of this plane this plane are three two zero its next parallel plane will be six four zero then nine six zero nine six zero and this way the parallel plane will appear so what does this mean this means that you can locate the parallel planes of atoms wherever you want by these miller indices i am not confusing you too much but please copy this slide and look at these planes that how the parallel plane appears and these are groups of planes along a particular direction and you can practice various figures and morphologies by this because it is a paper question that people give you draw this plane or this that plane or show directions in a unit cell and you should know at least about it when a plane is parallel to an axis the intercept of the plane on that axis is infinity hence it miller index for that particular axis will be zero when the intercept of a plane on any axis is negative a bar is put on the corresponding miller index all equally spaced parallel planes have the same Miller index number HKL. As I told you, the 222 two, two is equivalent to 444, four, four, equivalent to 666, six, six, equivalent to 888. Eight, eight. F odds are not allowed. These are the conditions upon various crystal classes or group. As I told you, the space groups and the point groups limit the, uh, the, the choices to restrict or to limit the number to a finite value otherwise it would have been infinite the distance between the centers of two nearest neighboring atoms is called nearest neighbor distance remember this the distance between the centers of two nearest neighboring atoms 
is called the nearest neighbor distance. Coordination number, which is very important when we were talking about the bonding, the coordination number is basically the next nearest neighbor uh, atoms. And coordination number is defined as the number of equidistant nearest neighbors that an atom has in a given structure. What do we need? Why do we need this? Atomic or unit cell is not a wooden or metal box, but an electromagnetic entity which changes due to variation in field. And what does the change? What does the change do in the what does the change in the nearest neighbor do? So an atom near an other electromagnetic atom is not independent of the field of that atom. So the nearest neighbor not only change the electrical behavior of an atom, but also changes the, what you call, ionic radii of that atom. And when it changes the ionic radii of that atom, then its repercussions upon the uh, engineering of materials are very huge because you change phases. When you change phase, then you can't expect the same property because the symmetry has changed. So how can you expect the same property from different symmetry uh, of crystals? So the nearest neighbor or the coordination number is very important. Atomic packing, which, which I told you in the start, I just gave in a glimpse. Packing factor is the ratio of volume occupied by the atoms in a unit cell to the total volume of the unit cell. So it is the total volume of the actual atoms divided by the volume of the unit cell, which is V over V. Yes, yes, yes. So if you calculate the A, and it is, a, for example, a cubic crystal, then A multiplied by A multiplied by A, because A, B, C are equal so a cube is the volume of this and now from the ionic radii of these atoms calculate that how much volume is actually occupied by the material then that volume divided by the unit cell volume will give you the packing fraction of the atom so how much space is free and how much space is occupied it determines the density of the unit cell. Yes, yes. So these are various pictures, just giving you glimpses of crystallography. But I think I should stop here and then move how people measure the crystallinity, how people measure the crystallite size, and how the reciprocal space is playing an important role but your course is mostly associated with the introductory concepts. So I'll check that. And then in the next lecture, we will discuss these. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.